In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an exploded assembly in a technical drawing using the TechDraw Workbench. Then I'll show you how to insert the technical drawing into a document. The type of document doesn't really matter in this instance, but it could be a plan, a proposal, or etc. I'm going to use a draw model that I created for the introduction to the exploded workbench in this video. I've linked to the video demonstrating how to create the exploded assembly if you'd like to check that one out first. The technical drawing will include a parts list and callouts linking to the parts list. If you'd like to support my work, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. Your donation will help to improve the channel. Now let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create a blank page for the assembly. I'm going to use a blank page because it can be added to a document in a word processor. You can choose a template with a title block if you wish, because the steps shown in this video are not dependent on a blank template being used. Now I'll switch to the tech draw workbench and create the blank page using the A4 landscape blank template. Select the exploded assembly and the page and then click the insert projection group icon. Set scale to custom and the custom scale to 1.5. Then click the OK button. You'll notice that only the trajectory lines are displayed. Obviously, this is not what I want. The view of the exploded assembly is stored as a projection group for the page. I need to delete this before I can start again. Expand the page and you'll see that there is a proj group item which needs to be deleted. Right click on the proj group to open the context menu and then select delete to delete it. Alternatively, you could click on the proj group and press the delete key if you prefer. After doing that, a blank page remains. Now to include all items in the plan, I need to select each and every item as well as the exploded assembly and the page it will be displayed on. Now click the Insert Projection Group icon to insert the view. Set the scale to custom and the custom scale to 1 is to 5. Then click the OK button. There is a card in the top right corner if you'd like to learn more about the TechDraw Workbench. Now let's add a parts list. The TechDraw Workbench allows you to insert a spreadsheet into the page, so I'll make use of that feature. I have already created a spreadsheet called Parts List which contains a list of all the parts. There's nothing fancy about the spreadsheet, it's just two columns containing the information and no formulas. Inserting the spreadsheet into the page is quite easy. Select the spreadsheet in the model view, then press the Control or Command key and click on the page. Now click on the Insert Spreadsheet View icon to insert the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is inserted into the page, but you'll notice that only the first two rows are displayed. This is easy to fix. Click in the view of the spreadsheet in the page. Select the spreadsheet in the model view. The view's properties are displayed in the data pane of the property view, including the cell numbers of the first and last cells in the spreadsheet. I have to change the cell end property, which is currently set to the second column of the second row. A quick check of the spreadsheet shows that the end cell is B7. So I'll set cell end to be B7. You can see that the spreadsheet on the page is resized to include all the data that I've specified. I'll take the opportunity to set the spreadsheet view's caption to parts list while I'm making changes to the view. This will be displayed on the page and means that I don't have to add a separate heading. Now I'll start adding callouts which link the parts to the spreadsheet. I'll start off by placing part numbers, then draw leader lines. I'll start with the draw front and I'll use the Insert Rich Text Annotation tool. I don't use the Base feature and skip straight to starting the Rich Text Editor. Click on Start Rich Text Editor to edit the annotation text. The Rich Text Editor allows you to edit text as though you were using a lightweight word processor. You can change the style, color, size, etc. of the text. For now, I'm just going to set the text to be the number one, representing the draw front part number. I don't want to frame around the text, so I'll leave that disabled. The text is added to the model as soon as I click the OK button. The text I entered has been displayed in the text box in the combo view and you can edit it there if you wish. Sometimes the annotation uses a white text colour so you can't see it. In that case, you'll need to change the colour of the text to black so you can see it. 
Now I can add the leader line from the annotation pointing to the part in question. Select the annotation by clicking on it and then click Add Leader Line to View icon. You need to select the annotation before you can start the tool. The Add Leader Line to View tool allows you to choose points for the leader line as well as set the line symbology. The first thing I'm going to do is choose the waypoints for the leader line. I do this by clicking on the Pick Points button, then selecting each point and finally clicking on the Save Points button. You'll note that a dashed line is constructed following the points I've selected. Now I'll set the symbology. I like to have ending arrows only, and I want the style to be dashed. Click the OK button to insert the leader line. Sharp-eyed viewers will note that the last segment of the leader line is horizontal. This is not what I want, and there are a couple of ways of dealing with it. There is a global setting in the TechDraw Workbench's annotation settings pane, which controls whether the last segment is horizontal. You can disable this by turning off the leader line auto horizontal checkbox. Changing this setting has no effect on leader lines you've already created. You're going to have to edit each leader line to remove the horizontal section. Select the leader line that you want to change. Change the value of the leader property called auto horizontal to false in the data tab. Now double click on the leader line so you can edit it. Click on the Edit Points button and you'll notice that each waypoint is displayed with a large box. Drag the point to the place you want it. You can move any number of points on the leader line. Click the Save Changes button to save those changes. Finally, click on the OK button to update the leader line. An easier way to add callouts is to use the Insert Balloon Annotation tool. This tool creates a circular callout that contains the part number and a leader line that points to the part. Part number automatically increases its value each time the tool is used, which is great if you annotate the parts in the same order that they are listed in the parts list. I'll come back to that later. Let's have a look at it in action. For simplicity, I will start with the draw front. I need to select the part before I start the tool. Then I'll start the Insert Balloon Annotation tool and select the point where I want the end of the leader line to point to. The tool creates a circular annotation with a leader line pointing to that part. You can move the callout by clicking on it and dragging it to where you want it. I'll add callouts for the two sides and the back. I said earlier that the Balloon Annotation tool automatically increases the part number. This is great until you make a mistake. You can change the value of the part number after the fact if necessary. I'm going to deliberately get it wrong to show you how to fix this. I'll do this by annotating the draw sides out of order. Let's fix the left draw side first. The balloon callouts are listed under the project group for the drawing, so I'll expand the page in the model view and select the balloon. The text field in the data pane contains the text that is displayed in the callout. Editing that field will immediately change the value of the callout. I'll fix the other one and add the rest. For the purposes of this video, the drawing is at a point where it could be inserted into a documented plan. The drawing needs to be exported before it can be used in a document. This is a fairly straightforward process. Select the drawing page in the model view, then select export from the file menu. Change the file type to be technical drawing, set the name of the file, then export it. FreeCAD creates an SVG file that can be inserted into a word processor. Now I'm going to show you how to insert the drawing into a document using LibreOffice. I presume that it also works in Microsoft Office, but I haven't tested it, so your mileage may vary. Open the document. Here's one I prepared earlier. This plan has only dummy text and the contents don't really matter for this video. But in practice, I would prepare a number of tech drawings and insert them into a more detailed plan. Place the cursor where you want to insert the diagram. Select image from the insert menu. Navigate to the directory containing the drawing you want to insert, select the file and click the open button. The drawing is inserted at full size and you'll need to resize it to suit your needs. In LibreOffice, you right click on the image and set its parameters. I'm a bit rusty on MS Office, but I think it's similar process there too. You can repeat this several times as required. It's a fairly straightforward, but potentially time consuming process. 
You can use this process to make plans that are as simple or as complex as you require. I hope you found that interesting. Check out my video on how to create an exploded assembly. I've linked to that on the right. I have linked to a playlist of other videos about the TechDraw workbench on the right as well. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. Your donation will help to improve the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.